Ocell date is an opti optically stimulated luminescence date. It's kind of a cousin of a thermoluminescence date. Okay. Basically, similar principle. It uh -huh. dates instead of like thermoluminescence dates the last time something was heated to a certain level. Gotcha. OSL dates the last time it was exposed to sunlight. Oh, okay. That's pretty cool. So, and the way it works, the short version is, is there's little defects in the crystal lattice of quartz and feldspar grains uh -huh. on the surface. And if those are on the surface, sunlight makes little electrons that build up from radiation. They scatter and can go away, but something about, and I, I'm not a physicist, but something about once they get buried, instead of them escaping, they stay trapped and accumulate. Traps out. Uh -huh. And so for the date, dating method to work, you have to know how many, how much energy is accumulated in those traps, because it tells you how long that sand grain, or that set of sand grains has been buried. Okay. And so, the, um, so you don't want your sample to be exposed to sunlight or else all those little electrons will scatter to the wind sure. and you won't have anything to measure in the lab. Right. And so you'll just think it's zero years old. And so that's why I collect them in these uh, tubes is, is really a way to get a sample that hasn't seen sunlight. You can, you can sample at night without a tube under a tarp with a red light. Yeah, so the basic idea is just to get a sample that hasn't seen sunlight and that doesn't get to see any light until it's in the lab. They okay. basically process it under a red light, just like a photographer, very similar to a photography lab light. Okay. And it's not until they put it in their fancy high dollar reader gizmo and that thing hits it with light and that causes it to give off its energy and the machine can read how the rate at which they accumulate the electrons you have to know the rate at which that happens because that varies and that depends on how radioactively hot the sedimentary matrix is depends on how much cosmic radiation it's getting from space and so that depends on your latitude, longitude, and your depth below surface, and your elevation. So those are all factored in. And then moisture kind, uh, can retard the rate at which radiation travels through the soil. And so you estimate soil moisture. And all of that gets thrown into an equation, and that pops a, a date. A number. <laughs> Yeah, and it's the advantage is obviously you can you can date things when you don't have organics. Disadvantages, it's usually not as precise as a radiocarbon date, okay. but you don't have the calibration curve uh, fluctuations to yeah. have those plateaus to give you artificially huge standard deviations recent time. So it's really nice for the last 500 years, but it can go back to couple hundred thousand years depending on how radioactively hot the sediment is mm -hmm. nice. if it's too hot then it might only extend back 60,000 years hundred thousand years okay. or if it's radioactively really dead relatively speaking then you might be able to stretch it back I don't know 300 400 <laughs> You can use PVC in sandy sediments, yeah. Um, but, yeah. or even in not so sandy sediments. It's but it's it's a battle. It's like pounding sand. It can take. I've pounded on tubes for you know, like a half hour, and you just get completely exhausted. You know, a millimeter at a time. Yeah. Whereas this is pretty sweet. These sands aren't too tough. When you have sediment that's not very compact like this. Put something like that in the end of the tube. That keeps the sand as you're driving in from slumping. The idea is, is you, the, you want the analyst to have confidence that the sample in the middle is deep in the wall and not grains from the. Sure is roughly the surface of origin. And granted. We don't know whether that surface of origin that we're seeing is a deflated surface yeah. or a buried and cast 
need to get I'll take each sample has two accompanying sample samples um, one is sediment surrounding it the 10 centimeters surrounding it are the most important but you get a little bit more so that they can measure the how radioactive the sediment is oh, okay since we don't have a guide counter